I'm going to try and survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. Hello everyone, I'm Bottletop Hornin, and in this video, I plan to play through hardcore Minecraft for 100 days without using totems and see if we can start creating a nice little world for ourselves. I'll be honest with you, I haven't played hardcore on my channel before, and my first attempt at this, it didn't end well. I just wanted to be safe from the mobs, but got surrounded. And it led to the end of the first attempt. But 40 days in wasn't too much of a setback. So we're going in again. And this time I'm gonna play it safe. I want diamond armor, I want protection for, and most of all, I want to have a fun time playing. So, grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack, and let's get started on my 100 days in Hardcore Minecraft. To get things started, let's make ourselves a new world. Once in the world, I mark spawn, and there was a boat right next to us. This kind of gave me my first goal. Loot ships, get some resources, Hopefully get ourselves a little set up right off the bat. After looting a little bit and getting myself a treasure map, I realized that I was right next to a village. So, I grabbed what I could from there and headed off in search of treasure. Using a boat on ice makes traveling quick. So, I decided to spend the next couple of days searching the oceans and the surrounds for different ships and treasures. This helps me get a good supply of diamonds and iron armor and tools, as well as everything I need to get started in this world. By the end of day three, I'd managed to get myself a good supply and my inventory was full. So I found a little village on the edge of the ocean and I placed down a bed to sleep for my third night, getting us into day four. On day four, I cleared out my inventory and started to explore a little bit. Eventually, I came across this crazy piece of generation, and while it might not be the smartest place to set up, or the safest, I begin to light it up anyway. On day five, I put down my bed and set up a little chest area. Then, I went back and gathered the materials that I'd left over in the village and made my way back to start working on a little iron farm using Ian XO4's design. Day six is where I really got the farm built. I spent most of the day working on it, digging out the area, setting it all up. So that just before the morning of day seven, we finally had some iron coming in. With the iron farm running, on day seven, I went around looking for different trees so that I had some different materials to build with. And then I stumbled across this ridiculously large mushroom island, which being hardcore could be a good place to build. But I decided to leave that space for later on. With the sun rising for my eighth day, I continued my search for those trees that I never actually found the day before. And eventually I found myself a dark oak forest where I collected a bunch for later. For day nine, I had decided to do a little bit more exploring of this area I was gonna turn into a base. I wanted to make sure that it was all lit up. So I went through the caves, adding torches everywhere that I could to make sure that no mobs would spawn or at least reduce the chances of something surprising me. For day 10, I really wanted to start getting some more infrastructure set up. In my first attempt at this, I'd managed to get some villagers and set up a little villager breeder so that I could hopefully make a villager trading hall. But unfortunately, that did get cut short. Luckily, I have a village right here, but only one of the villagers seemed to survive in my time around here. I think the others may have met their end. So I traveled across to the village that I originally put my chest down at and grabbed a couple from there, bringing them across back over to my new base. 
to hopefully use for villager breeding. Day 11 started with a bit of a scare. While I was searching for a place to dig out to start my villager breeder, I ran into a witch. And although I know you can't die from poison damage, being this low in hardcore is definitely terrifying. But once my health was back up, I started digging out the area for the villager breeder. And I made sure to fix the iron farm that had broken while I was doing so. I spent day 12 clearing out a decent sized area for this breeder. I kind of like to make my own design for things, so I have an idea of the size and shape. And once I had the area cut out, I decided I wanted some spruce to build with, so headed out in a random direction, hoping to find some before the night. I actually got quite lucky for day 13. I want to build with some mossy cobblestone and I didn't have enough moss to make some. But I came across a large tiger biome and even though it was probably the smallest one I've ever seen, I still managed to get some spruce and collect myself a decent little bit of mossy cobble. This will be good for designing the walls and of course I can get some spruce and take some saplings back with me. Heading into day 14, I started off by checking the iron farm was working, which it does seem to be. I went and gathered some dirt, found some lost friends, and started setting up the dirt for the village breeder. This is where they're going to grow the crops, and use that to make more villages. After that, I decided that I would need some bone meal, so I went and gathered some hay, and some other bits and pieces that I could use to run through a composter. On day 15, I made a bone meal setup where I could put stuff in the top chest and allow it to run through the composter automatically. I grew some large spruce trees to gather some materials and then use that to start the decoration of the villager breeder. On day 16, I continued the decoration and started making a little tunnel to move the baby villagers out of the way into a spot where I could use them later. I want to get some villagers set up with some basic trades and hopefully get myself some things like diamond armor and diamond tools that I can trade emeralds for. Thankfully, the few diamonds that we found in some treasure chests were enough to make this pick and these tools, and it's really made getting this stuff set up earlier a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. The purpose of these early days has been setting up infrastructure like this iron farm and just getting stuff ready to make a little village a trading hall. Being able to get myself diamond armor, some of it enchanted, as well as diamond tools is really going to help me survive and so I moved the villagers from up top and took them down into the breeder. I may have kind of forgotten that I needed to block them in so that they can't just walk out. But once they were back in there, I locked them in and the villager setup is ready. It was at this point that I started to get a bit of a plan. I had the iron farm set up for trading iron with certain villagers, and there are melons growing in this village as well. I think a melon and pumpkin farm is probably my best bet, so I started gathering some materials, and to make sure that the villager breeder was properly working, I went and grabbed a little bit more wool to make some beds and just finish the setup a little bit. Once I was sure that that was done, I made a little holding chamber at the end to house all the baby villagers and we could get started on this trading hall. All I needed to do then was just add a little bit of extra lighting and the village breeder was done at the end of day 18. The next three days I started making this trading hall, carving out the side of the mountain and designing a little area to hold them in their individual cells so that they'd be safe from monsters and I could also trade with them whenever I needed to. This stuff can take a while at this point of the game, but we've got to remember that we're only 20 days in, and hopefully this will help us get some better tools and allow us to make more stuff a little quicker in the future. I'm not trying to speedrun this 100 days or anything like that, 
I'm not aiming to take on the dragon. I'm not aiming to do anything crazy within the 100 days. I'm just enjoying my time playing Minecraft and seeing what I can do with this little area. Seeing what I can make in a hardcore playthrough. I think taking your time and just enjoying the game for what it is, playing it for the joy of it, is really what makes it special. When day 22 rolled around, I'd made a little space for the villagers when they were ready, but I needed time for them to grow up in the holding chamber. So I spent the day kind of designing different bits and pieces and coming up with an idea of how I wanted to make some things like bridges and little walkways that would go around this area connecting all of the different parts of the base. Unfortunately, this did go through a lot of spruce, so I spent a little bit of time chopping trees down and just thinking about it some more as I did so. Trying to come up with some basic designs for the area while I'm doing the grindy stuff. Just thinking about it and sort of going about this build with no real plan. Just winging it. On day 23, I now have a decent amount of wood and one of my villagers has grown up. So I tested out my system, managed to get him out and into place and put down a workstation to get him started. Thankfully, with all the treasure chests I'd found and the ships that I'd looted earlier on, I had a decent little amount of emeralds that I could use to get started on the trading. I wanted to get this guy up to the point where he could trade iron, because with the iron farm set up in the background, it was my most reliable resource. And it means that I can get some emeralds to help me trade with the other villagers and expand my villager trading hall. I managed to get him up to expert, but wasn't quite able to get it to master on the first day. So I spent the rest of the day working on these walkways a little bit more and thinking about starting to build into the side of this cliff face. And since I'd spent most of the evening and into the night building, some of the extra villagers have managed to grow up. So I threw them into their spots too, and we had a little trading hall going. Day 24, I continued to work on the walkways and bounced back and forth between building, and trading, lighting up little spaces that I hadn't before. And then slowly getting the villagers built up to the point where I could trade for diamond gear. With that becoming a reality and something that I'll soon have, I'm feeling a lot safer and I'm feeling a lot more like we're going to survive in this one. So it ended up being a lovely building day and I progressed with the villagers. It's nice, feels good. We're just about a quarter of the way there. Day 25, a quarter of the way through, I grab some iron, continue trading, working on my walkways, and making sure I had all three of these villages up to master. I wanted to make sure that before I did anything too scary, like going into the nether, that I had a decent supply of diamond tools and diamond armor. So I wanted to make sure that they were all up to that trade. At this point though, it became pretty obvious that just trading iron wasn't gonna cut it, especially with the size of the iron farm that I have. So I started gathering some things to make a melon and pumpkin farm. Oh, and it was also on this day that I finally managed to get full diamond armor. Oh, it feels good. Now, for this farm, I'm going to need redstone, but also quartz, which means I'm going to have to head into the nether. And there are other things that I need to prepare as well on top of that. I started mossing the bottom of this valley as well, just so there was consistency and it wasn't all these different stone types. This mossing continued on the morning of day 27, and while I was doing so, I figured the best way to get that redstone and safest was probably to make myself a cleric villager. That being said, for the quartz, I'm still gonna have to head into the nether, but I need to trade a little bit more today to get some emeralds for another diamond pickaxe. So I finished the day off by building a bridge. Foolishly, I spent the last of my emeralds on that redstone, so I had to spend day 28 building, allowing the iron farm to build up a supply that I could trade for more emeralds. 
I added more moss and just continued to build for a little bit. On day 29, the moss was getting there and the iron farm should have enough now for me to get the emeralds that I need. So we buy ourselves a diamond pick and go in search of some obsidian. With the obsidian in hand, I headed home to make a nether portal. I'm a little bit nervous, but I do have full diamond armor and I've got some diamond tools. We should be pretty safe as long as we play it safe. Once I enter the nether, I have a little bit of a look around my initial spawn. Don't see anything too serious, but we have a little bit of an explore. One of my usual habits when I get into the nether is to dig into one of the main chunky walls that I find and hopefully push through into a new biome. But this one didn't really do that and I just stayed underground for way too long. With nothing but a basalt delta in this direction, it was a bit of a bust. But at least I got a few bits of quartz, so silver linings. I didn't realize that at this point I had ticked over into day 30, but I was in quartz gathering mode and I spent most of day 30 continuing to do so. Trying to build up a good supply so that I could come back and make this farm. It was late and it was rainy when I made it back to the overworld, but I used the rest of day 30 to craft up some observers and get ready for this farm. Day 31 dawned and I decided to find a spot to build a melon and pumpkin farm. I picked this area underneath the villager holding cell, made some adjustments to it, and then got to work digging out the room below. It was about this point that I think I broke my diamond pickaxe and I didn't have enough emeralds to get more, but it was okay. Day 32 was when I finally got myself a farmer villager. The goal here was to get them up to master level so I could purchase golden carrots as a great food source. I then planned to work on the melon and pumpkin farm, but realized that I had no gold for powered rails because I accidentally traded it to my cleric. So I headed down into the mines to see if I could find some. On day 33, basically a third of the way through, I was still going up and down this little waterfall to get to my iron farm. If I was going to start laying things out and using this more consistently, I needed a better way to get there and to get to the resources. So I lined myself up with the iron farm and dug a tunnel from down below. This way it would line up with the chest and I could just run down this tunnel to grab it whenever I needed it. On top of that, I managed to place down some rails for the day. And by that point, I realized I was definitely gonna want a bigger iron farm in future. As day 34 dawned, I realized my iron farm wasn't working and there was a small problem. But after I fixed that, we were back in business And for the rest of the day, I committed to building the farm. I got the rails sorted. Added the dirt. Planted the seeds. And managed to set up my observers as well. I just need a little bit more iron to finish the pistons. And this thing will be up and running. So I gathered some of the passive melons while I waited for the iron farm to work and spent day 35 finishing up the melon and pumpkin farm. I got the pistons and redstone in 
and everything was working decently enough. By the end of that day, I was ready to start making some emeralds now that I had a way to generate mounds of pumpkins. I just needed to get some more farming villages. I went out and grabbed some hay to use for trading. Built up the new farmers. And allowed the melon and pumpkin farm to run in the background. At this point, hay seemed like the best way to get through those initial levels with the villagers. So I went out searching on the ocean for another village to see if I could find some more. And then... I stumbled across something incredible. An enchanted golden apple in a ruined portal chest, just under the water waiting for me. This is an amazing thing to have in hardcore and I'm really glad I found one. It's going to make getting out of a sticky situation if I get caught potentially life-saving, but at the end of day 37, I hadn't really found any more villages with hay, so I headed back home, grabbed a little bit that had been growing on the shoreline, and then, uh, well, yeah, I really need to patch these holes. As the morning of day 38 started, I realized I had 39 levels, and so, I'd really like to make myself an enchanting table. But exploring caves is really dangerous, especially in hardcore. So rather than going down and exploring them, and potentially dying, I decided to dig myself a mine shaft instead, all the way down to the bottom of the world. It hit day 39 while I was digging at the bottom here, and after opening things up a little bit, I found a few diamonds, grabbed some extra obsidian to make the table, and all I needed now was some leather and sugarcane to make the books and get myself 15 bookshelves. Now, of course, my sense of direction in Minecraft is fantastic, and I absolutely knew where I was for day 40. It just so happened to take me the whole day to um, loop back from where I came. I wasn't lost, I was just searching for things and stuff all day, of course. Cool, we're on the same page. Perfect. At this point, I only needed a little bit more leather, and then I was ready to set up my enchantment table. After exploring a little bit, and gathering what I need, I set myself up with a small enchanting area just next to the villages, to kind of separate my initial trading hall with what I planned for the future. And I think it turned out really nice. It's just a perfect little spot for it tucked in there. This enchanting table changes things. I can purchase diamond armor from my villagers, then I can disenchant it and use the enchanting table to get some better stuff. I can get things like this amazing new pick, or at least a good base for a pick, and I can enchant my armor for way better than what I would get just from trading. Protection 4 is huge. It means that I'm going to be way more likely to survive a lot of damage, and it means we're very likely to continue in this world well past 100 days. 
as long as I'm smart. And with my melon and pumpkin farm, as well as my iron farm, I can trade with my villagers to both get emeralds that can buy new things, as well as to get the levels that I need for enchanting. It's perfect. So, a little extra before the day ends, and then we can head into day 43. I ducked into the nether on day 43 to gather myself some soul sand. I wanted more deep slate for building, but going up and down that ladder takes a long time. So I wanted to make myself a little elevator to get up and down from the bottom. I spent the rest of the day working on that, as well as doing some trading, fixing up the area where I held the villagers so that I could get the experience when I traded with them. And also managed to do a little bit of enchanting towards the end. On day 44, I gathered myself some kelp. And set myself up with a very scary drop down to the bottom of the mine shaft. I then made an elevator all the way back up to the top using a bubble column. Only just making it as far as oxygen goes while placing the kelp. I also reluctantly tested out the drop, even though I was pretty sure it was going to work. This is still scary to do in hardcore. One false move and this could be the end. But with that working well and access up and down, I was feeling pretty good. And with my experience problem fixed in the village of trading hall, the whole place was feeling pretty nice. Day 45 was a simple one. I spent the day strip mining for deep slate, gathering some materials, and getting ready to do some building. On day 46, I decided to turn this bottom area into more of a pond. I want to slowly start bringing everything together, but like I've said earlier, I don't have a plan for this area. This is all just improvised. Building what feels right in the moment and taking things slow so that I don't make silly mistakes and so that I can continue past 100 days. I did a little bit more trading, gathered myself some levels and I managed to make myself a perfect helmet. All we needed now was to get a mending villager and I was looking pretty good. On day 47, I chopped down a bunch of spruce trees, further building up my supplies for the building that I plan to do. At this point, I was feeling pretty cramped in my little chest monster here, so a storage room would be nice to start working on at some point soon. But not yet, because at this point I had the base villages that I needed and I wanted to start adding some librarians. But because there's so many different types of books that I want to get, I'm probably gonna need a lot of them. Hence why I spent day 48 and 49 digging out a massive area here to eventually house all my librarian villages. By day 50, I'd gotten into a bit of a groove. I would do a little bit of building, gather some materials to trade with my villagers, try and get myself some new enchantments on some gear. But as I was down at the melon and pumpkin farm, I could hear some zombie villagers. It turns out somehow a zombie had gotten into my holding chamber and converted all of my villagers. This could be a blessing in disguise though. So I ventured into the nether to explore. I wanted to find myself a fortress so that I could get some blaze rods for making potions. Eventually, I did find one. It didn't have any rooms with nether warts in it, so I'm still gonna have to find that later, but I did manage to get the blaze rods that I needed for making some potions. On day 51, I was venturing back and forth through the nether, gathering materials that I needed for curing. I made myself some golden apples, and all that I was going to need now was some mushrooms. At least I knew where there was a forest that I could get some. So, on day 52, I went back to my dark oak forest. Grabbed myself a few mushrooms, Combine that up to make myself a weakness potion. 
and splash my zombie villagers to cure them. While I was waiting for that, I continued to search for feather falling until I heard the sound of them curing in the background. So, with my villagers cured, day 53 was spent cycling trades, trying to get myself either mending or something else really nice. After many cycles, I eventually found a silk touch that I wanted to keep, so moved on to the second one to work until I got myself mending. By the end of the day, I had a pickaxe that was almost perfect, and now with that mending book, I should be able to make sure that all of this enchanted armor lasts. When I was digging out this library initially, I didn't really have the best enchantments on my pickaxe. But now that I had this nicely enchanted one, it meant that I felt a little bit more comfortable settling in for some proper work on the base. So for the next seven days in game, I committed to mining out an area and building what will hopefully be a library to house more librarian traders that will get us essentially all the enchanted books that we need for our gear and weapons for the rest of the playthrough. It was the first time that I was actually able to settle in and do some proper building in this world, and it felt good. It gave me a chance to spend some time working out what the designs I wanted to go for were, see how it felt combining different block types, Plus, it gave me some time to think about the vibe I was going for in this base and sort of plan ahead a little bit as far as the rest of the building. In the end, I'm pretty happy with the design and how it's all turning out. This is nice. At this point, we were 62 days in, and for days 62 and 63, I decided to continue the grind. All that work going back and forth to my little chess monster over here was just not cutting it. And so, continuing on from the work that I'd done in the library, I wanted to add a hall off to the side which would be my future storage room. A place where I could set up some nice automated storage and think about the long term as far as storing blocks and items and bits and pieces. It was a full stack of days in day 64 that I finally managed to get myself Feather Falling 4. This really just feels like the ultimate point as far as getting enchantments on your gear. It means I'm going to be able to survive for a lot longer than I initially would have. It means that if some little accident happens, I will hopefully make it out of it alive. As long as I make sure to keep making good decisions, I should be fine. On this day, I also went back to the Dark Oak Forest to gather a few more stacks of building supplies before heading home. We were going through the blocks pretty quick, so making sure that I had a decent amount in backup storage was always a good idea. I still don't have a beacon, so digging out an area like this does take time. Day 65 and 66 were purely spent carving out the roof for the storage hall, just getting the shape down so that I could start working on it properly. And the reason I didn't dig down fully in height earlier was so that I had this platform to work off of. It made setting up the ceiling a lot easier and we could dig it out lower later. On day 67, I started adding some beams to the ceiling and getting an idea of the details that I wanted to do as well as going over and doing some trading with my villagers. Healing some tools, getting some levels. And at this point, the villager holding cell was getting pretty full. So I'd have to deal with that pretty soon. On day 68, I finished designing the ceiling and got it all tied together. I came up with a pretty nice design that kind of goes back to my roots and how I used to build. It feels really nice, so I was quite happy with the results. 
And then, for all day 69, nice, I dug out the storage hall down to its proper height, continuing into day 70, setting up the beams and making sure that it all felt right. We're getting on in the days now, but it does feel like I'm starting to make some progress on some areas that I wanted to work in. On day 71, I finally managed to get my armor fully enchanted, except for the few special books that I would find. Things like Soul Speed and Swift Sneak and stuff like that, but the base enchantments were done, and I was feeling really, really good. From there, I kind of just spent the next couple of days pottering around. Placing things, working on some trading, adding details, and just kind of thinking about how I wanted it all to come together as I played through. Starting to think about how it would tie together between the areas that I'd built and kind of thinking a lot past the 100 days. Thinking about this world as a whole and what I wanted to achieve. So I kind of kept doing that until the end of day 73. Thankfully that time thinking about it did help me come up with a few ideas that I wanted to work with. I continued to work on joining everything together with the walkways, making sure that everything felt connected. I wanted to try some things with some daylight sensors, so I needed a little bit of glass. I went to the nearby desert to gather that, and kind of forgot how low my shovel was. Oh well, it's fine, I got what I needed for now. And using a book from one of my villagers, I managed to make myself a Fortune 3 pickaxe, just so that I wasn't wasting materials and I could gather a little bit more of the coal. From there, it was time to turn my attention to some decoration. I wanted to try this little design using daylight sensors to activate the lights when it became nighttime, so that it wasn't always lit up, but when things became dangerous and I didn't want stuff spawning, they would kick in and provide a little bit of extra light and also show me visually when it was nighttime, which is kind of nice. It's a little detail that will hopefully work out and we shouldn't have too many things spawning around here. Plus, the ones that stay underneath the cover and might get a little bit too dark seem to stay on all the time anyway, so it's fine. At this point, on day 78, I was starting to think about how I wanted to blend things back together. I wanted to do some terraforming to make it so that my building looked like it was a little bit more ingrained into the landscape. So. I wanted to make some scaffolding to make that a little bit easier. I had a little bit of bamboo which I bone milled, but I did need some more string. So I waited until nightfall and spent most of my nights searching for spiders to get some string. Until the dawn of day 79. Sometimes shaders is really kind of beautiful. Getting into the terraforming on day 79, I wasn't aiming for anything fancy. I just wanted to blend it in and make it feel like it was natural landscape, rather than having a separation between what I'd built and the land above. I could always go back and add more details later and make it a little bit nicer looking, but for now, this is more than enough for what I wanted and it made it look a little bit nicer. On day 80, I decided to go into the nether in search of a different fortress. One where I could find some nether wart, and hopefully in a slightly better location than the last one. I used some blocks to bridge across the lava lake, and actually ended up finding myself a hidden bastion that was tucked into the netherrack. 
I considered going into there, but if I was going to do so, I was going to need some gold armor. On day 81, I had myself a basic enchanted gold helmet, and I figured I'd risk it. If I took it slow, use some lava to fight the brutes. I feel like I can survive this. As long as I make smart decisions, it should be fine. Things got a little bit scary when I tried to kill a brute and a ghast attacked me at the same time, but in the end, it all worked out. And I got myself some decent loot. Just not the template that I was hoping for. I'd really like to get some netherite. Also, with this armor it seems like I can at least take a hit or two from the brutes without it being too risky. So, good to know. Knowledge for the future. The next few days were spent exploring all over the place in the nether. I was really hoping to find a fortress with nether wart. I made tunnels in every direction, not finding anything. Eventually though, I did stumble across a soul sand valley, and I decided to grab myself some bone blocks for continued mossification of the base. Prove to myself the ghasts were no match for me. And then, as luck would have it, this is where I finally found my fortress. It's perfect. Going in for some exploration, I found myself some nether wart. I looted some chests. And after a few kills, I managed to get myself my first wither skeleton skull. At this point, I kind of invested so much time finding this place that, even without a looting sword, I figured I'd stick around and go for all three of the skulls anyway. After quite a bit of time, I finally had three in my inventory. It only took me 73, because I killed two before checking. And with that, I began my slow journey home, hoping that I can remember where that was. And so, on the morning of day 85, I made it home with three Wither Skulls to my name. A beacon would make all future digging of this base a lot more efficient. So I went about preparing and over preparing for the fight. An enchanted bow, a smite sword using a book from one of my villagers, some milk to get rid of the wither effects. I made strength potions now that I had the nether wart. And I was definitely not going to take this on in any legitimate fight. Not this early into the world. So, I made a cheesy corridor. And 
on the dawn of day 86. The wither was defeated. Oh, and what a view as I ascended from the depths of the mine on day 86. It was inspiring me to build more in this area and make it really come together with these shaders. I crafted up my beacon, but I'm going to need some more time for this iron farm to run. So, using the bone blocks from the nether, I got back to mossing the valley floor. This will act as a really good base to build off. It's day 87 now, and for the next few days, I settled into adding to the base. I filled in holes in the ground that I'd fallen into dozens of times at this point, I added new walkways, making little bridges and stairs. And essentially, I wanted to bring everything up to a more usable point. With the 100th day getting close, it makes sense to try and make it feel like I've got a solid foundation to build up from. So it felt good to start tying everything together with some building. The village of Breeder had been looking pretty plain since I initially installed it, so I decided to add some deep slate walls and a little window to see the villagers going through their tunnel. I fixed up the floor a little bit as well, and on day 91 and 92, I terraformed the mountainside down on top of the village of Breeder and trading hall, cleaning it up, making it look a little bit more finished. I added ceilings to the inside of the village of Trading Hall with the goal of making everything feel a little bit more complete. Because at this point I was starting to spread moss further and further through the valley floor, as well as bringing my walkways across, it seemed like a good time to move all my original chess monster over into the stuff that I had near the new storage room. That way, when it came to making the storage hall, I had everything that I'd gathered so far and could use it to organize a little bit better. Plus, it meant that I could start mossing the valley, which is what I did for day 94 and 95. At day 96 in, I really didn't have much time left, and there were still so many things that I wanted to build in this world. I was still trading with my villagers, I still wanted to add details, and little bits and pieces, and there was so much expansion to do on this base. In fact, so many things were running through my head that I wasn't going to get done before the 100 day mark that I decided to write down a list of things that I wanted to still achieve in this world and sort of goals to aim for in the next episode or even further beyond. So here's the plan. I want to fight the dragon, get Elytra and Shulker boxes and probably make an Enderman farm. I want to improve the iron farm, 
make a sugar cane, a bamboo farm, finish my library, probably make a tunnel bore, auto storage in my hall, and a super smelter, probably connected to the bamboo farm. Beyond that, I wanted piglin trading, a wither skelly farm, maybe a tree farm, as well as moss and bone meal. I want netherite armor and more beacons. I want all my tools sorted and a gold farm for the piglin trading. I'd like a general mob farm. I want to expand the base. And of course, I want to survive through all of that. But I still had a few things to do and I definitely didn't spend all of day 97 trying to fix and improve the collection system for the melon and pumpkin farm. Yeah, it's all right. It ended up being pretty good. For day 98, I connected up some more paths to make sure everything was accessible from everywhere. Even though I planned on getting Elytra fairly soon, hopefully in the next 100 days, I still like to connect everything in the base so that it feels like you could walk around anywhere at any time. I continued working on this area into day 99, adding those finishing touches to the paths and some walls to make everything feel as complete as I could as we reached the end of our first 100 days. And so, here we are. I made it this time. 100 days of totemless hardcore. And we have the beginnings of a beautiful little Minecraft world. I didn't rush to create anything incredible in these 100 days, but more decided to settle into the world and get a feel for it. As I went, the area just naturally expanded as I needed new things. We have a list of plans on the wall to achieve as we continue another 100 days and beyond. But for now, having reached this first milestone, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, it would really mean a lot if you left a like and also left a comment on what you thought of it. If there's things that you'd like me to improve on in the next one, if there's stuff you would like me to add, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. This is my first time ever trying to make a video like this, so your feedback is very important to me. I just want to know if you guys like this world so far. <laughs> but with that being said, I am going to leave it here. So until I see you again, be it in this world or one of my many others, I hope you all take care of yourselves. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for watching my first 100 days video.